All right, I hope you've all been tuning in to this build series. This is the XR650L project bike, and now it's time to take it out and bring it to somewhere to uh, test it out and make sure this thing works like it should after all these upgrades. So it's Utah. It was going to be here in California, about a 200-mile ride here in California. The Utah ride is about 1,000 miles, and i got to get the bike there. I chose to put some beefy tires on here. That's really not a street-legal tire. Uh, that's the Tusk Gummy, and the front is a DOT tire, so that one will work just fine. Since we are going to Utah, I got the trailer and the car and put the bike on the trailer. And uh, we'll, this, we're going to leave 5.30 in the morning tomorrow, so we'll pick up there. <laughs> this is a funny clip because it's a clip of me trying to show you the uh, bike loaded up on the trailer. I've got the camera sideways. It's 5.30 in the morning. What do you expect? Anyway, so I'm going to get in the car and we'll make it to the first rest stop. All right. At least uh, it's light out now. So uh, in the Sierras, uh, headed to... <laughs> Where am I headed? <laughs> headed to Utah. And I uh, got the bike on there. So it's really quick. This is a look at my setup for uh, taking the bike to Utah. Actually, you guys saw the last time I rode this thing, so I haven't really ridden much of this bike so hopefully it's still uh, working well when we get there <laughs> i don't have much doubt of that but uh we are oh, there's my lovely license plate from uh got that nickname from uh baja anyways um it's been a pretty drive through the sierras in the morning cut up highway 80 we'll head into Truckee. And uh, we'll check in a little bit later. And a quick view of leaving the Sierras. We'll get going. Figure I gotta give a quick, a quick update from every state. So this is Nevada. And Nevada's got a bunch of uh, long, lonely roads. So I just caught a couple of shots here in and out of uh, Nevada before we get to Utah. And we got a long way through Utah. There we go. Okay, well, I am uh, still in Nevada, but you can see the salt flats there. And if you look way right there by the next to the hill, you see the salt flats and the straights there. Uh, I don't think we're going to do any speed records, but this is where the salt flats are. Well, it figures I just missed the uh, Utah State Line sign, uh, but uh, we're in Utah now. And coming up right here behind that truck right there, the Bonneville Speedway, that is a sign there, half mile. Those salt flats seem to go on forever. But I suppose if you're doing 300 miles an hour, they gotta go on forever. All right, so we made it out to the Bonneville Salt Flats. And I uh, just stopped at this little rest area here. See if we can uh, show you what that all looks like. There's the Bonneville Salt Flats there. There's the car in the background, the motorcycle. And no, we're not gonna go do a speed run. But uh, <laughs> as uh, tempting as that would be, it would probably be 80, 90 miles an hour, and that's about it. Let's... I had to stop and take a couple of pictures of the bike by the, in the Salt Flats. Uh, well, I really, I had to pee. That's It's a rest stop, but uh, here we go. All right, now we are coming into Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, we're here at, uh, what is this place? Rocky Mountain ATV MC. <laughs> the nice enough guys to have uh, put a route together that uh, we're gonna follow over the next four days. There's Randy in the background getting his uh, bike ready. There's the uh, back of the XR, kind of looks like uh, but I think when I'm riding on that, think of those big legs there and a big butt. That's what that looks like. <laughs> and uh, it's light enough now. We're going to take off this first section pavement because we got to get to the trail. All right. And let's see. Look over here. Let's get a little shot of their logo on their building. If I can get that focused. Hello. As we enter... Utah National Forest. Got all the fall colors and everything. Pretty cool.
go, uh, we start hitting the trail. Uh, it's about 115 miles of pavement for this first day, just to get kind of back into Utah, uh, sort of the back country of Utah. We started in Payson, Utah, and uh, headed up into the canyons. Just some beautiful fall colors here, kind of a gorgeous scenery. We're working our way up in altitude, uh, up to about, uh, we'll see here, about 9,000 500 9,600 feet and uh, I'm taking it pretty easy because I'm on these uh, tires which are brand new I hadn't even ridden on them yet so they were a little bit dicey and with the the uh, pavement being a little bit wet I was a little bit afraid they might be uh, might be a little slick but uh, they worked out really well the uh, that gummy tire seems to stick pretty well on the pavement and the uh, front tire which is a DOT tire um, it's a little bit it's okay. It does all right. It's not a great street tire, but uh, but let us work our way up through the mountains here. So we worked our way up the mountain for a couple hours and got up to this uh, viewpoint here, which is about 9,600 feet, something like that. Tires seem to be working good. There's my load. I actually changed. I didn't go with a tank bag. I went with kind of a giant loop bag. And uh, there's our sign for, I think it's 9,600 feet, something like that. Utah Lake. I'd leave this clip in here just because uh, you know it actually went up a little higher than I thought and uh, you can kind of hear how this bike is doing it's actually running pretty good but it just doesn't have enough air it needs to be uh, rejetted a bit for higher elevations we'll give you a hear what that sounds like cheating so I kind of learned that there's a certain RPM that the bike would run just fine on and if I gave it too much gas then it would just starve of uh, air and it would start balking a little bit so I kind of kept it at that uh, range there. our way back down into the lower elevations here's some of the sites we saw still on pavement but uh, we are headed for dirt quite soon this gets to be more in the areas that I'm used to Utah looking like now and you get these big rock structures and mountains that are kind of gorgeous uh, so far we're really close last stop before uh, dirt what an interesting place just a hollowed out mountain it's sandstone so it's pretty easy for them to hollow it out they put a store in there and you got yourself a gas. Here we go into Poison Canyon Road. It's a cool little road. It drops into a canyon. It's sort of like a slot canyon. You're driving in the sand and stone. Uh, there's a shot here of my GPS. You can see the route we're follow on it right there. Hook it up. cool 
vehicles, this uh, bike really handles the sand well. It's uh, just extremely easy to ride this bike through the rocks and all the sand, and uh, I think it has a lot to do with the tires. Photos are a bit out of order, but uh, I couldn't remember exactly where they went. Some of these uh, spaces uh, were definitely before the Slot Canyon, after the Slot Canyon. I'm really not sure, but they all happened day one. There's me falling down and uh, getting my bike back up. A uh, little bit of sand there. Get later and later in the day, we follow this little slot canyon back to our first campsite and uh, make up camp. It's uh, been a long day, a lot of driving, a lot of riding, and uh, we're pretty much ready to get into that campsite. All right, this is my tent. <laughs> my sleeping arrangements for night one in Utah. Let's see, let's go look around camp a little bit. A lot of sand, so we kind of had to separate our bikes both bikes did just fine let's see take a look at this place a little bit here kind of down into a slot canyon but up above the wash bit of a canyon going up past my tent there probably a game trail going through there maybe a mountain lion will come through there's Randy over here. Hello, Randy. Sinking some. Uh... I don't think we have satellite coverage in here. Oh, that's not good. Well, there's Randy's tent over there. Nice setup. All right. Day one is, what do you call it, in the, in the bag. All right, with day one in the bag, now we're going to start day two. We picked up camp and are getting ready to head on out for the day. There's a big sand trap up in here with this uh, campground, but I uh, don't really like camping in the sand. It just gets with everything, but we kept it pretty clean. So let's get on the move. Couple little photos of the uh, canyon there, the part of the slot canyon of the rock formations, and then our camp after we uh, cleaned up. Make sure it leave it cleaner than you left or got there. slot canyon things started to get a little bit more sunny 
had to stop for a little bit and just kind of warm up and enjoy the sun. I would say if I came back here, I would continue a little further rather than camping in the slot canyon and camp out here where it gets sunnier a little bit quicker. Maybe get an earlier start on the day. Farther we get, the more grand the scheme or the views become. Uh, looking down into these larger canyons, the rock walls are much, much taller. Uh, some pretty scenic places to take a look at uh, at the country. Really looks beautiful. This runs down into the river we've got across, and we've heard a lot of stuff about this, uh, this river and whether that crossing is going to be deep or not. And so we're kind of... Uh, Kind of worried about it a little bit. Get down to the creek, and uh, as you'll see here, it's just brown, so you really can't tell whether it's deep or not. And you'll see me go into it totally not. I don't know if it's two feet, one foot, or six. And of course, yes, it was only about six inches deep, but hey, gotta get the uh, video across and you never know when somebody will fall in. <laughs> Randy's not going to fall in, but uh, it's good to know it was only a couple inches deep. <laughs> Sometimes that can be pretty darn deep. At this point, uh, we spend the uh, afternoon uh, working our way up the canyon and around the canyon walls. So you just kind of go in and out of all these different crevices of the canyon. Kind of some nice riding. Didn't get a lot of video at this point, but uh, we did get uh, one point where things started to go a little bit south. And uh, so I've got some photos here uh, coming up that are... Uh, so had to take a picture of my GPS at this point. There's the place where I actually had to leave the bike. I actually took a picture of my license plate too, just in case uh, we didn't find it when we came back. And uh, at this point right here is where uh, my counter shaft sprocket stripped and i did get a heads up from a couple of you guys out on youtube thank you so much but you know i checked it it was totally secure it didn't shake it didn't vibrate it wasn't loose uh looked fine and uh, as you're going to see here this is after about 350 400 miles of uh, riding and it is stripped out completely bald um my luck has it that the counter shafts counter shaft is in great shape, not even marred one bit. So ordering up a new counter shaft sprocket, things will be in good shape for that. And here's a pretty picture of me trying to diagnose the problem. Actually, I think I'm siphoning gas, so we made sure we had enough fuel to uh, make the trip back, double up on his bike. Not an easy trip out, guys. It was uh, quite a difficult uh, task, having to ride uh, two up on a bike with no rear pegs. So I could touch the ground. Uh, he couldn't really necessarily touch the ground. Ends up being hours. I was doing some walking just to get my uh, feeling back in my legs. There I am hitchhiking. Uh, he's having <laughs> fun taking some pictures of me just walking. But I'm like, gotta walk some. Can't just uh, ride the whole way. Uh, about 170 miles of that. All right, moment of truth, guys. Is the bike and all our gear still there? It's only been, has it been 24 hours? Just about. About 24 hours. So as we come around the next few corners here somewhere, of course, we've got this marked on the GPS so we'd be able to find it. Uh, and for some reason, if we couldn't get back to it, we could send somebody else to it. So we've got like four GPSs with this location marked. There it is. There it is. Holy smokes, you see that? There is the bike. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Thank you for being here. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to go up this trip. Okay. Well, you want to get up? I was going to say, I'll start getting the gear. All right, I'll tell this a uh, little bit over 50% done with the rescue mission. <laughs> the bike's in the truck. Thank God for Randy right there with the truck. <laughs> And uh, we're headed out. I hate to throw an abrupt end to such a great trip, but we packed up that bike and headed back to Payson, Utah. Next morning, headed out, back out to Livermore. Randy headed back out to New Mexico. And uh, we enjoyed the trip. 
we had all the safety gear we needed. We had two uh, in-reach devices so we could call for help if we needed. We ended up having enough water. Big shout out to Brad in Utah. He uh, brought us another four bottles of water out there in the middle of nowhere. Fantastic dude. Anyways, I'm going to have a follow-up on this bike. The bike did fantastic. That suspension is just amazing. And uh, the bike did great. Have a new counter shaft sprocket coming, a much better heavier duty one. And uh, we'll follow up as soon as that's installed and get another ride out there.